Are you okay? The tower just exploded. I noticed. Thank God you're all right. Rachel Ghoul was the power behind Hugo Strange. This whole place was part of his plan. You're kidding. Where is he now? Let's just say he's going to need a trip to a Lazarus pit. Hello? Is anyone there? I'll get back to you. Something's come up. Hello, Batman. I know you can hear me. I'm not caught you at a bad time, have I? I was worried that you may have forgotten about little old me. Oh, Check heaven forbid. Your girlfriend, who, as you can see, is in danger of having a pretty little brain splattered all over this camera. <laughs> Ignore him, beloved. Let him die. Oh, how done. romantic. Only problem is, I've never felt better. And we both know, you really can't ignore me. Can you? So listen, Batman. I'm putting on a little show for you. It's going to be a doozy. A real red carpet affair. You'd better hurry, though. If you take too long, a leading lady may be found dead in the dressing room. <laughs> That's a great objective marker, isn't it? Get the cure from Joker and stop him from becoming immortal. That's brilliant. So, we've ascended to heaven and stopped God averted the rapture and now we must return to where it all began that's right the monarch theater crime alley itself because of course that's where, where the jokers shacked at? up Pulling off his last laugh. Figures that the likes of the League of Assassins, a world spanning organization of, you know, the Illuminati assassins that want to purge the world of crime and sin. <laughs> Figures that the Joker steals the spotlight and gets the last laugh from them, though, right? I always hate confrontations like that, where it's like your leading lady's waiting. Batman. Where where Batman like grabs Strange and it's like, look at what you've done. You're killing people, and he's like, yeah, I know. That was my plan. Like, look at what you like. Who are you? Who are you convincing, Batman? Of course he knows that he's killing untold scores of people for pretty much no reason. A lot of them weren't even real criminals. Most of them were, but a lot of them weren't. Oh. I mean, like... You soon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I missed the chance to show them off, but... Always so hard to do this part pure stealth. Oh. Ooh, so close. Anyway, and then he's like, Rachel Ghoul, whose entire raison d'etre is, me, right? I wanna, you know, wipe out the all of the criminals on the planet or whatever, you know, that vague nonsense. You know, that higher purpose, I guess. And he's like, good, people are dying. And he's like, yeah, that is what I believe to be true. I think killing criminals is a good thing. It's like arguing with the Punisher by just going, you're killing people. And he's like, yeah, thanks for noticing. <laughs> like. That's always the issue with, like, dealing with moral convictions of that measure. Well, this is just... Like, there's no justification. There's no discussion. At the movie theater, and you can't even be there's no, that. you know, two-way conversation. He's just going, that's bad, though. And he's not 
like, you're not going to convince anyone that they're wrong just by going, No, but kill bad, though. Kill bad, though. When they don't believe that killing is wrong. In order to solve the issue of, you know, criminals or whatever. That's not a compelling argument, and that always just bothers me. And at the same time, Ra's al Ghul's like, Join me. Like, this will be our legacy. We'll both kill a whole bunch of criminals. Like, really, Race? Do you think that's going to convince him? Like, Batman's defining signature is he, his moral convictions. His absolute, like, no compromise belief in the sanctity of life and how killing is wrong. Do you really think offering him a position in your fucking organization is going to sway him? Just both ways to Sunday. Shit like that always bugs me. Not, you know, those kind of characters. Not that the writing is bad or anything. Anyway, let's finish this. Let's finish this. Finish this. What the fuck? Anyway. Okay, there's too much weirdness going on with the Joker. I think we are earned an explanation on this one. Hurry up and take your seat, Batman. The show's about to begin. Let's just talk about this. Oh, now you want to talk. Oh, now you want to talk. <laughs> I totally forgot. Too late, Batman. Give me the cure! But you've already got the cure. Yeah, what? Talia, no! <laughs> huh, that actually is pretty funny. Problem solved. <laughs> you didn't need to. Why? You would never do it. You left me no choice. There's always a choice. I is had there? to save you. Harley Quinn stole it for him. I took it back. So, wait, how is he better then? He never took the cure? It's over. Surprise! <laughs> oh, Mr. J, you look perfect. Ring, ring. So how do you keep a secret from the world's greatest detective? Well, do you know? You stick it right in front of him, right under his long, pointy nose. And wait! Joker wants you to think he's sick. Then well, gotcha. You fell for the old fake Joker gang, Batman. Told you. Oh. I'm sorry, beloved. I didn't know. <laughs> Encore. More. Bravo. <laughs> it wasn't never you. Not always. Well, sometimes. <laughs> uh, confusing, isn't it? I know I'd want to know just what the hell is going on if I were you. <laughs> Let's just say, at times like these, it's important to keep up <coughs> appearances. But first, if you would be so kind... And Kudos to Mark Hamill. Those are deep, really sick, fucked up coughs right there. Really guttural coughing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for one night only, standing in for your duty, I'm doing a damn fine job of it. I give you a play face. Oh. You weren't even supposed to be in here, Carl. Why sign up with Joker? <clears throat> the role of a lifetime! Uh, good enough excuse for me. <laughs> hey man, if you had an opportunity to play the role of Joker, <laughs> you know, wouldn't you take it? So yeah, uh... The difference between this and the ending of Arkham Asylum is Clayface is actually a physically imposing villain who is actually capable of being, you know, the kind of stand-up monstrosity 
that Batman has to go all out against. Whereas Joker had to take a fucking Titan formula to become a fucking monster clown that was retarded. This is how you do it right. It really shows Rocksteady is capable of learning from their mistakes. And improving on, you know, what they previously uh, attempted. And also, great twist, am I right? Like, I tried not to give the game away, but they were dropping hints about this from the very beginning. I'm sure I could go back over the footage if I really wanted to and make a montage of all the moments that they were implying about what was going on. That it was a fake Joker, and moreover, who else could have been capable of mimicking the Joker but Clayface? If you remember the trivia that we found, uh, that Arkham City story about him, uh, from scanning the poster outside of the Monarch Theater. Actually talked about the fact that his whereabouts were unknown. And he was made a cameo appearance in Arkham Asylum. And the core thing he did in that game was pretend to be other characters. From Jim Gordon to Quincy Sharp to Aaron Cash. Why not the Joker? And if you actually pay attention to the parts where it was healthy, quote-unquote, Joker, not only did his character model look kind of unnatural, you know, kind of too pristine and plasticky, but he actually talked differently. Like, he said some doing? weird... Like, he wasn't as funny as the real Joker, and his... Uh, vocabulary was a little bit different compared to the genuine article as well. Like, my favorite line was always, well, bully for you, when talking to Talia, like, as if the Joker would ever say that, right? I mean, it's not like you've got a girl to save anymore, is it? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Too soon. <laughs> would a change of scenery help ease the pain? So I spoiled this earlier, but as you can see here... What is directly underneath Monarch Theater? The fucking Lazarus Pit. Right there. The very room we fought Rachel Ghoul in from before. And there's the Lazarus Pit behind Clayface. So the Lazarus Pit, the source of corruption, the source of the issue that arguably caused Gotham to be so crime-ridden in the first place. Again, Ra's al Ghul caused the very problem that he argued to solve. You know, what better way to profit from, you know, being an activist than creating the very problem that you're presenting yourself as a solution to, right? God damn it, I missed it again. Stop distracting me. Also notice Batman using the sword and being fucking awesome at it. Which I love, the implication of what a deadly threat- Oh god damn it, I keep fucking it up. I forget what I was supposed to do, but I remember now. Implying what a deadly threat Batman could be if he were to resort to lethal means, which, of course, this being Clayface, he really doesn't have any other choice but to resort to the lethality, because nothing else would even cause a dent, and it's not gonna kill him anyway. Just like Solomon Grundy. So yeah, the Lazarus Pit, the source of all of Gotham's ales, arguably, Hidden directly underneath the movie theater where Batman, well, Bruce Wayne, and his parents saw that movie on the night that they were killed. It will end where it began, indeed. Fuck, dog. 
it will end not only where it began for Gotham City, aka Wonder City and the Lazarus Pit, but it will end where it began for Batman as well. The birth of Batman. And the end of something else. Get out of my way, bats! I've got a date with immortality! I like how he knew the Joker would duck. Well, so hey, that's kind of fucked up. Wonder what the implications of that are. Well, whatever. We have more pressing matters to attend to. Quick, the cure. What are you waiting for? Come on! I killed your girlfriend. Poison Gotham in hell. <laughs> it's not even breakfast. <laughs> But so what? We all know you'll save me. Every decision you've ever made ends with death and misery. People die. I stop you. You'll just break out and do it again. <laughs> Think of it as a running No! Are you happy now? Do you want to know something funny? Even after everything you've done, I would have saved you. <laughs> that actually is pretty funny. <laughs> happened in there. So that, I think, is the final, you know... Bullet on the erg Bob Kane ripping off everyone else's shit and getting crazy for it. On the bullet point of the argument against Batman's effectiveness as a vigilante. There at the end of it all, Batman looks down at the cure and he knows that saving the Joker's life is only going to l end with more misery and death and suffering and letting him die will solve it all 
audio director's name Nick. How about that? <laughs> that letting the Joker die will instantly solve the problem. Instantly. All of the people he sought to kill and sought to terrorize, they would all be safe forever. And this being immediately after talking with Talia, who made compelling arguments, and dealing with Hugo Strange and Rachel Ghoul and all that, obviously he had a lot on his mind at that moment. And yet he still, even at the edge of the world, he still would have saved him. And I believe 100% that he would have too. That if Joker hadn't stabbed him and made him drop the cure, he would 100% have handed that over and saved the Joker's life. And in that act have been directly responsible for all of the death and misery that the Joker would have moved on to cause in his future actions. Because Batman's the very reason that he continued to live. And now he's dead. And you can't even begin to argue that the world isn't better off. Like, you can't even pretend to not be, you know, from the perspective of a resident of Gotham. Call received three hours ago. Only you can make this world seem right. Only you can make the darkness bright. Only you and you alone can thrill me like you do and fill my heart with love for only you. <laughs> only you can make this change in me for it's true you are my destiny when you hold my hand i understand the magic that you do you're my dream come true my one and only Only you can make this change in me, for it's true, you are my destiny, when you hold my hand, I understand the magic that you You're my dream come true, my one and only you. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me, Joker. I forgot to point out Batman carrying the Joker out of the Monarch Theater in that pose mirrors the painting we saw at the beginning of the game. Uh, I'll put up, I forgot what it was called, but I'll put up a, you know, screenshot in editing here. Comparing and contrasting. Rocksteady Bat Babies. No one cares about your fucking development baby. Show up to development pets. That's what we want to see. Anyway. There's, you know, the payoff to your biblical allegory. Batman and the Joker's relationship throughout the entire game has been built up. Specifically, you know, one-sided in terms of the Joker and his, you know, commentary on it. But there at the end, Batman is the one who lives, carrying the Joker out in the same pose as Cain and Abel. And who is the one who is in the position of Cain? Batman. And appropriate that the Joker stabbed him. And in a tie-in comic, it's revealed that 
the cut was so deep that the scar it left will never ever truly heal he was left with the mark of Cain but like but up up but up up <laughs> you know And, and, and again, there's the final nail in the coffin for the argument of Batman as a vigilante. He would have knowingly, you know, brought about the continued existence of a monster and a terrorist. He would have continued ravaging and, and raping through Gotham City forever. You know that line from The Dark Knight, you and me are destined to do this for eternity. And it being comic books, you know, that, like, the Bat Batman's line there, like, I stop you, you escape, you you go up around and do it all over again. That's comic books. Like, the villain does some bad thing and kills people, the superhero stops them, puts them in jail. Inevitably, by the very nature of comic books, they'll break out and do it all over again, because in comic books... You can't kill anyone off. The story has to keep going. The status quo must eternally be maintained. That fight, like the final biting, you know, condemnation of the ideal of Batman as a vigilante, and also, you know, the concept of the comic book superhero in general. And Batman would never compromise those morals, that view of thou shalt not kill. And again, if you're from the citizen of Gotham's perspective, the Joker being dead is de facto, like, by default, a good thing. That was a good thing that happened. Now that fucking crazy psycho monster will never hurt anyone ever again. And it, maybe it makes people wonder, like, why didn't Batman do that years ago? Why did he allow this to continue? And of course, you, you know, all kinds of arguments about Batman's motivations and very valid reasoning when it comes to not wanting to cross that line. But again, from the perspective of this game and it's analyzing that question, that issue that topic of Batman's moral convictions, his mental state, his effectiveness as an uh, as a symbol, as a, a force against in, in the war on crime seems uh, pretty abundantly clear to me that this game is coming down on the argument that no, Batman isn't you know, good isn't a force for good. Like, he's, you know, got good intentions, but in his existence, he's causing bigger problems to spring up in his wake. And his refusal to compromise or even, like, see, like, to him, it's black and white. It's binary. And he will just not hear any argument or discussion about it. And his control freak nature of thinking, you know, he's carrying the world on his fucking shoulders. Although this game only lightly touched upon that aspect. You know, it paints that final picture at the end, like this guy's crazy. His outlook on the world is not absolute. Like, it's good in principle and theory, but when you get down to the nitty-gritty details, maybe at the end of the day, it's causing more harm than good. And that's the key conclusion that this game comes to. Deconstructing the idea of Batman, ripping away all of the, all of the comic book glitz and glamour, and laying it bare in a pseudo-realistic setting. Still kind of goofy and zany, but at the very least, gritty and, you know, dark, and laying it bare, and saying, like, this is, w 
the way it actually is. Stripped to the bone. You know, it's not black and white. And his refusal to, you know, see the shades of gray. There you go. Story written by Paul Dini, Paul Crocker, and Stephen Hill. Paul Dini and Stephen Hill. Uh, and Paul Crow. I think it's Sefton. I think it's Sefton. I'd have to look it up, but Paul Dini is like, you know, the Hideo Kojima of fucking Batman. He's the Garth Ennis of Batman, as far as I'm concerned. He's the Gail Simone of Batman. Speaking of Gail Simone, fuck you, Barbara Gordon, Batgirl, not good thing, she's better as Oracle. Anyway, tangential, I'm strong Terra. <laughs> what is this? Why is it last names first? That's weird. Are we coming over the end here? I don't like to skip credits. But I am running out of things to talk about. Composer, Nick Arundel. Additional composition, Ron Fish. Mark Cayley, Susie Benchazel Sater, Nick Favola, Nick Woolage. Dude, the fucking trinity of Nicks worked on the sound design for this game. Holy shit. Wow, that's the shortest special thanks list I've ever seen. Wow, yeah, this is going on for a while. I might have to trim this. Or at least fast forward. I don't like skipping credits because, you know, these motherfuckers made a great game that I love. Dan Dido, yay. Jim Lee, too. And it's, you know, the least I can do is let their names scroll up on the screen as thank you. John Cunningham. That's a great name. Terry Cunningham. Yeah. So, like I was jokingly saying uh, back in the fake Catwoman ending, that's Arkham City. If you think Arkham Asylum's better, you're stupid. At the very least in terms of story. Because that's what people always say. They say Arkham Asylum had a better story. You're so wrong, and I'm not even willing to open debate on that one. Like, are you crazy? Like, I don't know how many times I gotta say it five ways till Sunday, but Arkham Asylum was a formulaic, like, paint-by-numbers, generic Batman 101 story that straight up ripped from existing comic book stories great co great comic book stories classic batman stories but in comparison to this which deconstructed the very fabric of batman as a concept and was a completely original you know plot in terms of it's not really taking the ideas from any given source material. I At least nothing immediately springs to mind, although it definitely took inspiration from more than a few sources. But the whole Wonder City thing, uh, Doctor Strange's Protocol 10, the entire concept of Arkham City, all completely original. And of course, you know, killing off the Joker, I don't think any comic book has quite had the balls to do that. They've killed off Batman, but I don't think anyone's really seriously even pretending to kill off the Joker yet. In the comic books. Jesus Christ, how many people worked on this game? 
God, and the PS4 re-release version is gonna be even longer, because they gotta credit all of the fucking retards who were responsible for the port that ruined it. I'm really glad I didn't end up waiting, because A, it got delayed, because they saw the backlash and those terrible screenshots and were like, fuck, we gotta fix this as much as we possibly can. And B, like, those new graphics, that lighting engine really ruins a lot of it. Because, especially in that concluding scene with, like, Hugo Strange there, where he's dying and he's looking at that race and, like, the reflection in his glasses... Like, that's artistry right there, and the remastered version completely loses that with the new lighting engine. Oh my god, I'm sorry, but I gotta skip it. I'm sorry. It's too fucking long, man. Like, not Ubisoft long, but that was pretty long. Time to get my things and quit this damn town for good. Yeah, on that note. Oh yeah, Clayface. Let's go ahead and close out on that note, actually. Oh yeah, I got all the upgrades that one. Professional criminal. You know what? I always love a villain with a sympathetic backstory. <laughs> Kill off the remake. All the people making a remake to a classic horror film. I can sympathize. I'm on your side on that one, Clayface. Good show. More power to ya. <laughs> anyway. Uh, we have more. But that's the conclusion of the main story. Everything from here is just wrap up. Uh, you know. Thank you guys for watching. I, really kind of a bummer to me that like the instant it closes out the credits, it immediately goes back into the open world. Like that's always kind of the consequence of having an open world game in the first place. But you know, it kind of ruins the effect just a little bit to not have that you know, definitive fucking, like, the end, story over, closing the fucking book on that shit kind of ending to just immediately fold back into gameplay. Uh, but anyway, that's our, like, hope you enjoyed, you know. I'm not done, but, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the core experience of Arkham City is pretty much over from here. Thank you guys for watching.